hello welcome back let's consider a business scenario so in this business scenario you are going to your favorite retail shop let's say amazon.com and then you are logging in then you are browsing a couple of products and then browse product and then you are adding some of your favorite product to the shopping cart and and then after that you might be redoing the step 3 and 4 again you, you browse another product and you add to the shopping cart then finally you are checking out and checking out this is where you are giving your credit card so that so that you buy the product and you pay for the products and after that you are log out out of this five transactions let's call this thing as a transaction or essentially in a web in, in the in the you know view gen language it is just an api right so basically this is something called web underscore url and then you are doing some parameter and one of the parameter is to get amazon.com then login that's something called web underscore submit underscore form then you are giving your user id and password similarly browse product may be something web underscore url and then some parameter and here check out maybe again another web submit form so basically what i'm saying here is that whatever this scenario that you are doing here those equivalent views and apis are here all right and then out of all these steps i believe this is the most important step say for whatever reason if checkout fail then then amazon.com will be in big trouble that means nobody wants to, uh, you know, maybe your, your browse product might fail, but that is okay. Like, you know, you can browse another product. But if the checkout fail, that is where the money is involved, then that is it's going to be a loss of revenue for Amazon.com. So in that case, it sometimes sometimes it a scenario like this arises where we want to stress the checkout process. That means whenever we are running multiple user, so this is how you are going to run a multi-user load test so this is let's say this is the script and your script is looking like this some you know web url web submit web url combinations of of apis and let's say this is the script one and then whenever we are going to run a hundred user test using this script and you will see those things in the controller chapter what you're going to happen is that we are not going to start all hundred user simultaneously that means if this is a timeline and this is how it's going to happen maybe we are going to ramp hundred users in a period of period of time let's say this time is called ramp of time that means i am going to start user number one at time t is equal to zero and at time t is equal to 10 second i am going to start user number two so that means if user number one is going to start at time t is equal to zero then it is going to run this web underscore url web underscore submit and web url and so on that means after 10 second whenever user number two gets his script they are not going to run simultaneously checkout activities okay so in that case we cannot really simulate like if you run 100 user and if our requirement is that all 100 user will do checkout simultaneously then that cannot be satisfied because of this reason that we are going to start user 1 user 2 user 3 at a different time interval you can always ask why don't you start all user 1 user 2 user 100 in same place that may not be practically feasible because the client or the or the other load generator may not be able to handle you know if you start thousand start hundred user or thousand user simultaneously this is the scenario that we need to simulate we need to simulate okay let you do you know if the user number user two user three let them start at different time and let them run all these things i don't care you know if they are running simultaneously you know login or browse product but what I want to do, all this user number one, user number two, user number three will run all these four steps and then it will wait. It will wait. So basically, you know, definitely user number one is going to first complete these four operations. So user number one is arriving here first. But don't run the checkout. Rather, wait. Wait for whom? 
wait for remaining 100 users to come to this point and whenever all like you know u1 u2 up to u100 100 arrives at this step 4 then boom simultaneously you go and then all 100 users do this checkout okay so the point here is to ensure the checkout call happens simultaneously for all 100 users okay and this is just a special kind of scenario where we want to really stress one activity all right so how do we do that okay so this is the scenario that user number one is going to come and then stay at line number four you can think that maybe i can put a lr think time okay and that think time will wait but do we know how much time it, it, it will it, it will wait and let's say if you put lr think time let's say five seconds right so user number one comes first and it wait for five seconds and then after that it will it will it will start what is the guarantee that user number 100 will will, will come within that five second and also like you know whenever the user number 100 is going to come come then it will also wait for five seconds right so therefore lr think time is not the right way so how do i keep the the user waiting at line number four so that is where load runner gives a added functionality and that is called a rendezvous point okay so rendezvous point is a, a a feature and that feature is going to give the ability to stop and whenever the remaining users okay and whoever you know, let's say i run this thing with 100 users then user number one is going to wait until user number 100 is coming to this point okay so so that is what is uh, so that is what the you know, rendezvous point is the functionality that vugen provides you to take care of this kind of activities as you know the rendezvous is just kind of secret meeting right so basically what you're creating we're creating a meeting place okay and here what my and then here i'm going to demonstrate and in my demonstration i'm not going to use amazon.com and what we can do we can use our script and that script is something that you know we are and then and, and basically we can simulate we, we can have a rendezvous point on our script as well and you just you just see like you know what we are doing in our in, in our, our demonstration script that we are going to the module home page so we are going to the module home page and after that we are logging in then we are browsing a course then we are log out and then what I want to do and like you know, let's say we are running you know 100 users okay I want all the users to wait and they will do login simultaneously okay so whatever was happening in this checkout I assume that login is my important activities for which I want to do a contention test okay that means I just want to know like you know, if 100 users is going to can 100 users simultaneously log in or not here is my my, my script and this is where I want to wait okay so before this web submit form this is where actually I am logging in right so here I will put a rendezvous point to do that you know route click insert and that's something called rendezvous and here you just give the name my name is x y g whatever it doesn't matter okay so in that case what's going to happen when I'm going to run this script in controller okay user number one is going to start at time t is equal to zero is going to run this web underscore url then it is going to run after say once it's finished it's going to run web underscore link then it is not going to run web underscore submit underscore form it's going to wait let's say i'm running 100 users it will wait the user number one is wait until user number 100 let's say i am starting one user in every second that means user number 100 is going to start after 100 seconds so after 100 seconds when user number 100 is going to come to this point all the users from user number 1 to user number 100 are going to continue to run this web submit form okay and that is what is the use of rendezvous point i cannot show you a demonstration here if i run in view gen because view gen is just only support one user but don't worry so i'm going to revisit rendezvous point to complete a demonstration in controller chapter okay and this is the api 
for to set the meeting point and the meeting point name here is xyz also load runner has one more function and that is called lr underscore rendezvous underscore ex so that's the extended function this lr underscore rendezvous is going to give you a return that is either pass or fail however lr underscore rendezvous underscore extension is going to return you more return type so let's take a look at the function reference for this lr rendezvous and lr rendezvous extension Okay, and, and as you see, the difference between LR rendezvous and LR rendezvous extension is that LR underscore rendezvous always returns zero, where LR underscore rendezvous underscore extension is going to return different time, the different kinds of, uh, you know, different return types. Like it can say that by default, the timeout is 30 second. If in time it 30 second, all the users didn't arrive, then it will time out. Okay, and this timeout also you can set in the runtime settings. Right. So we will show in detail about uh, these functions in the controller chapter where we can give you a live demonstration of the activity. So the key key point here to key so key takeaway here is to test this kind of scenario where you want to stress one activity. Okay. That you can do by putting LR rendezvous so that one activity can be can be stressed for all those users and the goal here is to find out any contention like you now for example if you are using a database if any locking is happening that time or not so those kind of issues can be found found out by create by 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 using this kind of uh, technique okay thanks